Hallelujah. As we celebrate this Sunday morning, glory to God. Is that your best praise? Hallelujah. I want to hear your best praise. Glory to God. Come on. He's alive. How do I know that? Because he lives within your heart. Amen. How many of you know that? How many of you know that God lives within your heart? Deep down in your Holy Ghost, baptized, fire, Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, so amen, amen. Well, I wanted to sing this song. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Isn't he welcome? Yes. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Let him know you welcome him. Omnipotent Father of mercy and his grace. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Come on and help me sing. Glory to God. Oh, Holy Spirit, our welcome in this place in your heart, Holy Spirit. Thou are welcome in this place, magnificent, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Holy Spirit, your world come right here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. Before I pray, I have to honor my pastor, Pastor Constance. Come on, stand up and honor. Come on and stand up and honor. Why are you honoring her? Because the word of God says, give honor where honor is due. Hallelujah. And it's the fifth Sunday, and I got a call, and it was like, we weren't pastor to, to relax and rest a little bit on the fifth Sunday. Will you be able to be available. In my heart, I was like jumping up and down. Well, yes, of course. I'd be happy to let her rest and let the Holy Spirit of God pour deep down and refresh her. We need to be thankful that we have a house of God to where our pastor is teaching the word of God and that we can pray for her that God would take her to another level. Hallelujah. This is just the beginning because there's a quantum place. Hallelujah. There's no limit for what God has for Pastor Connie. So we're going to be there with her, praying for her, not complaining, rejoicing, anticipating that she is manifesting what our Father created her to be. You see, she doesn't know who she is yet. Did you know that? We don't know who we are yet. We are still learning because of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God that lives within us is undoing all the garbage. 
for the spirit of the living God that created us to be according to his perfect will to come forth. Amen. That's what we want. And that's where we're going to have all the days of our lives. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we want to thank you for this day. Won't you join your hearts with me as we begin to pray? Holy Spirit, we want you to take authority. We want you to reign and rule in this house. We want you to let our hearts be ready. Let our hearts be humbled before you. Let our minds be made up that I hear and obey and receive what you have for me, Lord. Father, we ask that you take the authority in the Holy Ghost power to bind everything in the second heaven that would try to interrupt, distract, interfere with their thought processes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that we right now will be saturated, glory to God, with your Holy Ghost power, that we will receive what you have on this day Disappointed time for these, your people in this great house. And we give you glory and we give you honor for it. We count it done as every one of you are brand new. Hallelujah. Receiving everything that God has for you from the foundation of the world. And there's a period after it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to know that I'm excited. I want to thank God that my husband is here, right here. And you know what? Hallelujah. <laughs> Robert Bain, Joseph Bain Sr. Hallelujah. And you know, we, we go get our little uh, personal attention uh, together. And one little girl came up to me and she said, he fine. <laughs> I said, what you know about an older man being fine? <laughs> but I thought I got so tickled. I said, she told about he fine. And I said, praise God. I said, you got that right. Praise God. <laughs> and I'm boasting on it. Hallelujah. I have my youngest son and my youngest daughter here. <laughs> Hallelujah. For a minute, they're miracles. Both of them was set up to be dead. But God said, not so. They're here today. Woo! Glory to God. I want to thank God for all of my friends and family members and other friends that have come out. If I missed anyone and didn't acknowledge you, don't, don't take a person. Okay. I see, uh, oh, I do see my uh, darling Paul and Angela and Daniel who grew up here in this church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, get moving, okay? I'm going to get moving. If I go too fast, just tell me to slow down, okay? Because what God has said in my heart is blessed me. And I thank him so much that I stand before you alive with strength to stand before you. I'll tell you about that a little later. But uh, for the title of this message, it would be The Two Paths of Knowing, Understanding versus Spiritual Revelation. I'm going to say that again. We're going to be talking about two paths of knowing, understanding versus spiritual revelation. Hallelujah. Now we all know about how we can get understanding, we can study, we can pursue, we can reason. But I want Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to come up for you to read it. Because it's something for you to put in your spirit. Trust in the Lord. I want you to read this with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. Come on now. In all your ways, acknowledge him. 
and he shall direct your what? Your paths. Hallelujah. Why is that important? Because we can think we know a thing, but we really don't know. It's because of our exposure, our environment. We, I got it going on. You don't need to tell me nothing. I know, Mom. I know, Dad. You don't need to tell me. I know all about that. But you really don't know. Praise God. You know from your limited understanding. There are strengths in knowledge. And it can help you make some good decisions. Hallelujah. There is some uh, opportunities when you're at a limitation state of your minds that you can go to a different place and doing research and finding more information to enhance your knowledge. Amen? But what would you do if suddenly it was gone? What would you do? What knowledge would you have? You would? Amen? But there's another type of knowledge called spiritual revelation. And that's divine, inspired, and understood through the Holy Spirit of God, who has no limitations, who has no boundaries, but he goes deep down in your spirit. So could we pull up that scripture on 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10? I would like for you all to read that scripture. Because in this word, it says, For to this end I also wrote that I might put you to the test. Oh, I'm sorry. It was 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 9 and 10. Okay? Hallelujah. We can discuss the characteristics of knowledge and how it brings understanding beyond human comprehension. It often leads to transformation. When you go and commune with the Spirit of God, with His deep knowledge, it takes you to a place you didn't know about. It opens up your understanding to where you're surprised in so many ways. Hallelujah. Now, how do they interact? How do the, your limited knowledge interact with the unlimited knowledge of the deep things of the Spirit? In Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18, it will answer your question. It says, when we yield to the word of God, in Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18, oh, I see you have up there, uh, you're going back, okay, that's good. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 2, 9, verse 9 and 10. Thank you, video. I'll wait. I think I saw that up. Let me know if y'all see it. 1 Corinthians, okay. But it is, but as it is written, Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor even entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. So why can you go deep? Because the Holy Spirit will take you there. And he'll bring you up higher to a place. He'll be saying, who is that person? I remember when they couldn't even talk. They, could, they, they didn't know, no, they couldn't do a sentence. They couldn't have a conversation. But they're elegant. 
They're bold and they're courageous. Why? Because they spent time with the Spirit of God in prayer and in His Word. Hallelujah. And if you want to be there, you're going to have to start spending more time with your Father in His Word. Don't you want to go higher? Don't you want to be the best that you can be? I do. Don't you want people to be wondering about how she get to be like that? Amen. Then you can tell the story. When I got in the presence of God and I spent time with my father, and he began to show me myself. And I thought I was all that. And he began to say, oh, that's a fake and phony. I said, Lord, don't call me fake and phony. But he will show you yourself. And then he'll turn around and say, that's not the real you. I said, but that's all I know. He said, but that's not the real you. But when we humble ourselves before God, most of the times we're so busy with stuff. Going here, I got to take care of my children. I got to go to work. I got to do this but the first thing that God wants you to do is what? Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything that you're struggling, huffing and puffing, riding two hours here, two hours back to try to get what you want. He'll say, look, I'll just give it to you. Just come on and spend some time with me. I ain't got time, Lord. I got to get my kids to school. I got to go to work. It's going to take me two hours, Lord. Mm -mm. You get up earlier. Amen? It's a priority. If we don't spend time with God to know him, that's how you get to know him. How many of you have had a relationship with somebody you love? I don't see no hands. <laughs> Ooh, that's serious. What happened if you didn't get to spend time with that significant person? How did you get to know about all of your little specialties? It just didn't happen. How did you begin to know how when they look a certain way, something was going on? Because you spent time. The same way with your father. He wants us to know him, not just God who created us. He wants us to know him as father, our father, who is in heaven, that he's holy. But I tell you, when we call on his name, his ears are raised open to our cry. Hallelujah. There is nothing impossible for him not to do for his children. Now, let me tell you something. I told people, you don't want to mess with me. They look at me like I'm crazy. I said, I don't want to have to pray when you be messing with me. They said, what you talking about? I said, because my father said he's my front and rear guard. I bet he protects me from all hurt, harm, and danger. Don't you know that gives you some confidence when you have a father like that who's got your back, who will take care of you. You don't have to worry about a thing. We hurt. We're, we're hurting too much because we don't know our God as our father. But today, he wants you to emphasize in your heart, Father, I don't know you as my Father. I know you as God, but I've never spent that much time with you. I need to know you more and more and more. We sing about it, but do we apply it? Do we apply it in our everyday lives? Do we teach our children? Hallelujah. Let's get up in the morning and pray. That's the first thing we got to do. Do we go to bed at night? 
That's the last thing we got to do. Why? Because we've done some nonsense. We've done some disobedience. And we don't want to go to bed on that nonsense because why? The adversary will take that stuff and run with it while you're sleeping. If you don't believe the adversary is actively working while you're sleeping, wrong answer. He does not want to see you as a people of God walk in the blessing that Pastor Connie's been teaching us about. Yes. Hallelujah. But God says, when my spirit of revelation with your prayer and meditation in my word, books are nice, but this word here is alive. Amen. It's alive, saints. When you read the word of God, I don't care how hard your heart is, it will break you down to where you'll start crying. It will cause you to see yourself from a different perspective. When God says, I love you in the word of God, and you never had anybody to tell you that they loved you the way he speaks it in his word. It goes deep down in your soul. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter. I used to have such a powerful uh, problem with rejection. And uh, the Lord said, you don't have to worry about anybody rejecting you. I said, what are you talking about, Lord? He said, because I validated you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I validated you. And I tell you that if God is for you, he's more than the whole world against you. I don't care how much shortcomings you have. All you got to do is let him work through you, praise God. So in the meantime, I want you to know that if you don't believe that there's an accuser of the brethren, the word of God says in Revelation 12, verse 10. Can we pull that up? I want you to read this. Hallelujah. Because I think in this word, it will describe situations in your life that you may not even understand. In Revelation 12, verse 10, it's going to describe how the accuser is always in the presence of the courts of heaven. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night. Did you read that? Day and night has been cast down. Glory to God. The Lord already defeated him, but he still has access to the courts of heaven. And do you know when we pray, he's right there. Oh, no, they don't give everybody. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, bless my marriage, Lord God. It's part of my inheritance. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, bless me to be able to be rich. The wealth of the Lord. No, they don't belong. They don't belong there. They don't, they're not entitled to that. Why? Because he's accusing you before God Almighty for the things and the responses because God, he knows God only measures the intent and motivations of your heart. Amen? He's gotten the body of Christ to believe that if we serve every day in the church, I'll open up the door and I'll close the door. I'm going to be faithful to work. Hallelujah. But the blessed the Lord, the devil don't care nothing about that. If your heart's messed up, you can be serving all the days of your life. And he's standing before you, accusing you. 
Look, I got this. I got my book. They ain't never repented for this. They ain't never repented for that. And let me show you something else over here, Lord. Because they're not entitled to no blessings because look at this. Look what they have talked about. While they were serving in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at what they did here, Lord. Look at what, did they repent? No. Uh-uh. And it's in their heart. How do you know what's in your heart? By what comes out your mouth. Hallelujah. If you're always criticizing somebody, if you're always gossiping, if you always got the fault fine, pay attention. That's not the Holy Ghost spirit of love. Amen. So, but the accuser wants to condemn us before the courts of heaven. But I want you to know, Jesus has paid it all for you. All we have to do, hallelujah, is do our part. Don't act like when you do something, it's okay. Oh, I'm, uh, the spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. God understands I'm still, in the, I'm, I'm still in the flesh. No. It's your responsibility to be truthful with God. Lord, I love that porno. Lord, I love going to have sex with that man. I just can't get him out of my system. Oh, glory to God. God does not matter about the sin. He wants your truth before the courts of heaven. So when the accuser comes up there and say, oh, yeah, they went to church Sunday morning. They were just sleeping with the neighbor. Oh, for real? Come on. I don't know. Y'all act like you don't know what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> he don't care about you hiding your sin. All he wants is for you not to walk in your blessing, not to walk in your inheritance, not to let your light shine before men that it's going to glorify our Father which is in heaven. Glory to God. And there are so many ways that the adversary want to accuse us. But aren't you glad today that God's grace and his mercy from the foundation of the world, when he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, you will not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That was God's grace and mercy towards you. And the adversary says, yeah, they ask, yes, they ask for you to come into their heart, but their hearts are not clean before you. I have a right to come before your courts of heaven. I have a right. Um, I'm sorry. The phone was on. Oh, apologize. <laughs> oh, the prompt came on, huh? Okay. <laughs> so, even though Satan accuses you, we are rooted in the grace and mercy of God. But what the adversary desires for you never to do is to come clean with God. The only way you're going to come clean with God is to be truthful. It's nothing wrong with you telling the Lord, I love that sin. Because he knows it anyway. He doesn't, you don't even know, I'm coming to church, hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Your mind is on that man. I can't wait till I get out of church. You don't even understand what's going on. But it's real. But we're free. When God sets you free, when you come clean with God, then you can say and pray, Lord God, give me a clean heart so that I can serve you. Hallelujah. I don't want to come trying to be perpetrating when you see my heart. I want to please you. I want to make you happy. I want you to be like Jesus when Jesus, he boasted on his son and said, that's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Isn't that the report that you want from the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. He wants to stand, you to stand before the courts of heaven 
in his presence and say, Lord, I thank you that I come with a clean heart and clean hands. Not acting like you don't see what I do. Amen. God's not dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop letting the devil begin to have you believe God's dead. He's not paying you no attention. Yes, he is. Why? Because he wants you to receive all of the benefits that he has. How many of you see the mansions all on Facebook, all the dollar sign, 78 million? But God said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I've gone to prepare them for you. The devil is just a stealer. He's trying to steal things to let the world see, oh, I'm your God. I'm going to give you all this stuff. But their souls are lost. You have eternal life. You have the blessings of the Lord. You have the covenant of the blood of Jesus. You have the righteousness of God. You have what the Lord says belongs to you, and it's time for the body of Christ to stand up and say, I believe you, Lord, God Almighty. I know you can't lie. I know you speak nothing but the truth, and I'm thankful. Hallelujah. There's a scriptures that has over 50 kinds of hearts. I'm just going to read a few. See if you can find your heart. You may have a broken heart. You may have a contrite heart. You're so sorry for what you've done, but you never change. You may be grieved in your heart. That man left you, and you can't get over it. Hallelujah. You may be discouraged in your heart. Lord, I don't think I can make another day. You may be obstinate, so stubborn when the Holy Ghost said, don't do that, daughter. I'm going to do what I want to do. I enjoy what I'm doing, and I'll pay the consequences for it. Oh, I don't know if anybody's ever done that. I have. When the Lord told me to love my husband, I ain't loving that man. He done punched me. He abused me. He hurt me. I ain't loving him. But when God in his mercy fixed my heart. I couldn't do nothing but let his heart come in my heart and change me to love him like God said to love him. That's what God wants for you. Hallelujah. He don't want you to have no pride heart. He don't want you to have no pride. I got it going on. I don't need nothing from you. Pride locks out the blessings of God. That's of the devil. Hallelujah. You got a wicked heart. Hallelujah. You may have, you think you're perfect. I got it going on like that. I don't know what's wrong with you. You may have a double heart. You think you're one way one day, and the next day you're another way. That's not God. You may have a pure heart. You may have an upright heart. You may have a clean heart. You may have a forward and perverse heart. One that's disobedient. You may have a haughty heart. Oh, I call it the peacock. You can see. I had a peacock. Thought I was all that. Oh, yes, I did. Until the Lord showed me myself. He said, shoo, let me show you the real deal. <laughs> I couldn't do anything but get on the floor. And say, Lord, hallelujah, forgive me. You may have a heavy heart. Hallelujah. Is your heart heavy today? God doesn't want it heavy. You may have an uncircumcised heart. To where the adversary has blinded you to so many things. Hallelujah. You may have a deceitful heart. Look one way. Look another way. 
I can change in any environment I want to be in to become whatever I need to be. I call it the chameleon spirit. Glory to God. You may have a hardened heart, but where if the spirit of the Lord tries to speak to your heart, it's like open your heart. I'm not moved. You may have a diabolical heart a cruel and a wicked heart. You may have a covetous heart. Every time you see somebody, oh, I've got to get that. I won't have that job. Ooh, where, where you get that from? <laughs> I want to have the same thing you got. Well, what they don't realize, they can't walk like you. They don't have your body style. They can't respond the way you do. That's what makes you you. So don't try to be like everybody else. Right. Hallelujah. Get in the presence of God and say, Father, I don't know who I am. My heart has been wretched. The enemy has stolen all my blessings. But you let me know because he's been accusing me and because he's had a right and I haven't repented of all of this false heart. You want me to have your heart on this day, Lord. Yes. On this day, Lord. I found my heart. It's not like your heart. I want your heart in my heart. How many of you want God's heart in your heart? Hallelujah. There is no way in the world that this house will not be thriving and flourishing when your hearts are pure before God and you stand in the presence of God and you pray and you say, Lord God, I want you to bless me with this. He said, angels, make sure they got it. Angels, make sure they got it. There's no way in the world that we need to be struggling as the people of God. Those days are over. But the only way you're going to get that is you got to repent. You got to ask the Spirit of the Lord who searches the deep parts of your heart. Hallelujah. That He will reveal things to you. The reason I have the title of this sermon is because on September 9th, I had a episode that I never had before. I had a 220 over 115 blood pressure. Well, I never had that before. And I knew when I called the EMT and uh, they came in, because I work with them on calls as a chaplain, they were assessing me to see if I'm stroke, if I had a heart attack, and I'm laughing with them. Look, brother, I'm good. We all right. They took my blood pressure again. 220 over 110. They said, we need to take a ride. On my way to the hospital, I was praising God. But it was not until after I had got back home. And when we had gone to our sister Sherry Willis's funeral. And one of the ministers that have been here for years is a nurse for 35 years. And she overheard me talking about the episode. And she said, you should be dead. When she said that, something happened in my spirit beyond the thinking of the Lord. You hear me? I had to get in the presence of the Lord. I said, Lord, you mean I could have died? I didn't have that revelation. But when she said it, it brought me to a place that I never knew. And I'm telling you, when we are in positions that God puts things right in front of your face, don't ignore it. You hear me? I had been ignoring the instructions of God we had gone overseas to Aruba. Our teacher hooked us up with a year of eating healthy. We got this book called Eat Right for Your Blood Types. We were eating good until the year was over. 
we went back to eating everything we weren't supposed to be eating. And my body said, oh, really? Well, I'm going to show you something. But when God had all this come full circle, he showed me your mouth that you're eating, everything that there's a section in here that tells you foods that you're supposed to avoid. I never read that it said, if you eat these food for your blood type, it's poison in your body. But I always told my husband, I said, you know, when I eat this chicken, it's so good, but every time I got to lay down and go to sleep, <laughs> I feel like poison in my body. But when I looked in this book and I saw chicken, avoid it, I said, huh? I eat chicken, chicken, chicken. <laughs> chicken, chicken, chicken. Everywhere, drive through, give me chicken, chicken. I did not know what I was doing. But God put the dots together. He let me see. You got that 220 over 110 blood pressure. Because your body, you've been eating every food that you're supposed to avoid and you're full of poison. Your heart is working. You're being disobedient. And if you didn't have preceding prayers, the enemy would have had a right to take you out. But because I had preceding prayers ahead of me, glory to God, the Lord brought me back to the point, hallelujah, to where he said, do you understand what's happening? The enemy is subtle. Glory to God. He doesn't care how he take you out. Glory to God. He doesn't want you to walk in your blessings. He doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. He doesn't want you to, this house, to be the mighty house of God. That when people walk by, when they drive by, street, they'll see their cars are shaking because of the Holy Ghost power from you, from you, from me. When we enter into this house, we're coming into the house of God with a sound of praise. Hallelujah. So when Pastor Connie steps up, all she's got to do is start dancing with you. Hallelujah. Come on, saints of God. Let's go to another place. I want to go higher. I want, how many of you want to go higher? We need to go higher. Glory to God. We need to go higher. I don't like mundane. Glory to God. Nor does your father. He's not dead. He says, make a joyful sound. Come on and make a joyful sound. The adversary heard of our father. It stole enough from us, Lord God. We can see it on our faces. Hallelujah. No joy. Hallelujah. Oh, that's not your inheritance. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You got to come up. I'm, where are you going? I'm going to the house of the Lord. I got the joy, joy, joy. We used to sing that in church. Y'all remember that song? I got the joy, 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 joy. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. You young people may not know that song. I got the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. Where? Down in my heart. When? Down in my heart to stay. Yes. Glory to This is going to be a change. Yes. Pastor Connie, yes. she works too hard for her not to see in this house some shifting, yes. some power resonating from you to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. She doesn't need to have to be worried about that. She needs to have you know that I know who I am. What, Pastor Connie? In the name of Jesus, sh sh I got it. Yeah. It's not happening up in here. Anybody want to think they're going to step up in here as an angel of light spirit, clothed and on assignment to destroy the works of this house? Sh sh it's not happening. Yeah. Glory to God. I recognize you because I got too much Holy Ghost in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're not coming up in here. We are the protectors. As, as our protectors protect pastor, you all are to have the power of the Holy Ghost operating so mightily in you to where, hallelujah, ain't nothing.
Nobody gonna want to come up in living faith who doesn't have the pure heart of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the change start with you. Glory to God. Don't let your hearts be hardened. Don't justify when our hearts are not right before God. Be truthful. Tell him the truth. Tell him to help me, Holy Spirit. I got the, I, I, I got the, I, I, I just can't help myself. That's real. Some of you may not have experienced that. Where I just can't help myself. I just got to eat that last cookie. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just got to go back and get another hamburger. Oh, glory to God. I just can't help myself. It's so good. Destroying yourself. Glory to God. But I want you to know. Where you are in your heart is where your blessings are going to be. Did you hear me? Where you are in your heart with the intent, the purpose, and the motivation that's moving you, that you've never repented for, that's where your blessings are going to come. So I want you to know, Satan has a right to bombard heaven because he wants the world to believe I'm God. Come on over here in my camp. I got something for you that God doesn't have. Well, he can convince a lot of people because if many people look up on the body of Christ and compare it to the world, and the lavish yes. nonsense. Beyonce, excuse me. I know y'all have, she has some lovers and people like her. I'm not down in her. But they're feeding their baby caviar. Can you imagine that? Million dollar cribs. I couldn't even comprehend that. But that's what the adversary has deceived them. And we're just trying to find a house, a place to live. Well, those days are over, sight. I want you to be, be able to saturate our hearts. Let the deeper things of the spirit take you to the places that you haven't repented, that you've transferred them to your children, to where you see it in their children, to where you can make a supernatural shift on today. To say, Lord God, that mean spirit, that she acts just like me, she's not going to be mean no more. Glory to God. That lying spirit, hallelujah, that she lies to my face, she's not going to be lying no more. Because I, I used to lie to my mom. Did you do that? No. In her face. Then here come my children. Not these children. <laughs> Did you do something? No, mommy. Got the cookie behind. I didn't do that. Why? We never repented. We opened that door for our generations. But in this house today, we're going to stand and ask God to search us. Oh, God, what do you see that I have not repented for? but I've passed on to my children. What do you see in my heart that's preventing me from having the blessings that belongs to us? Hallelujah. Don't you want to get rid of it? Don't you want to reset yourself? God knows it. So it's long overdue. So because the Lord allowed me to have a 220 over 110 blood pressure. It brought me to a new place. Every time I go somewhere, I take this book with me. Oh, can you eat this? Let me check. <laughs> Let me check. Wait just a minute. Oh, it says before it. I can't eat that. Before it didn't matter because I loved it. But we don't want anything to be more loving than your heavenly father. 
That is the most important relationship. And I want to say this to every one of you in families, husbands and wives, children. Our Father is what he wants to be to you. That's the most important thing that you ever want to be first in your life. If you've never experienced it, just ask. He'll help you. Just be truthful. He'll help you. So then we can come together and have a shaking in this house. Glory, it won't be anything that like people like, Pastor God to say, talk to your neighbor. Punch your neighbor because uh, 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 to wake you up. It'll be so much fire in here. Amen. I, preach, Pastor. Preach the word, preach the word that we will be recipients. Yeah. That when she stands up before us in the presence of Almighty God, you as the believers will be receiving the word and the sword of God that will transform your lives. Can we just stand for a moment? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but nobody's perfect. And I don't want anyone to be condemned. But I want you to take a time to repent. In your heart, let the Holy Spirit of God Go deep inside of your heart and do what only he can do in a moment's time. While you're in his presence, oh Lord, let your cry be, give me a clean heart, hallelujah, oh God. I want to serve you, Lord, hallelujah. I want to serve you, Lord. Give me a clean heart so that I can serve you with all of my heart. No holding back. Thank you, Jesus. This is your time. Speak to your Father through the Holy Spirit that's there as he brings things to you that you have in your heart that's hindering your blessings. Those days are over. We prophesy. There's not one of you in this house who will not be true to God. Hallelujah. Let him bless you. Let him bless you. If there's one that knows in their heart they don't have the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Master and their Savior, make today the day that you will open up your heart and say, Father, forgive me. I know that you died for me. I have sinned against you. Come in my heart. How I believe that you died and rose again for me. And I want you to be Lord and Master in my heart. Right now, if you need to rededicate your heart to God right now and say, Lord, I have not been truthful with you. I ask you to forgive me and come back into my heart right now. Is there one? Just lift your hand. If there's one in this house, hallelujah, just lift your hands before God because he already knows. You want your blessing? Don't be worrying about no people. Only please God. He sees and he knows. Hallelujah. We thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for positioning your people's heart to be clean before you, to be able to be what you've created them to be forevermore. And we thank the Lord for this day and this time. It's marked for the last Sunday in September that you heard the word of God. 
And I don't know what's in your heart, but I want to leave you with this. If you don't want to have a clean heart, I pray that you do so that you can serve God with all you have. In Jesus' name, glory to God. And now, thank you, you may be seated. Glory to God. Thank you for allowing me to stand before you today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Connie, so much for giving me this opportunity. As Minister Kim is coming up to do tithes and offerings. Don't forget to give from your heart now. Y'all going to give from your heart. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Margaret, for such a mighty, mighty word. Thank you so much. Made me want to come and lay on that altar. Because, see, I thank you that I, I love you because you're always real. And every time you share your testimony of how God delivered you out of another place, it shows that your prayers preceded you because you and I know that you should have been dead a long time ago, but the devil is a liar. So I just love it. So thank you for being my sister and letting me know you more and more every day. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Pastor, because you have been a great pastor, and I will never stop praising you. I will never stop thanking God for you because all that you've been through, you know God, and I thank you for that. Amen. And so I'm honored to stand in this pulpit every time because she didn't have to let us come up in this pulpit, but she trusted God in us. So as we stand before you today, I just want to tell you to get your heart ready for tithes and offering. But this time, get your heart ready for tithes and offering. Do you hear me? If you believe in God for something, if you need something in the realm of finance or even things on this earth so we can live, you need to get your heart right. Because God doesn't need your money. God wants to bless you. Pastor talked about the blessing of God last week. Minister Margaret talked about knowing God for yourself. See, God already knows what you have need of. But if he can't trust you with the small things, he's surely not going to give you a mansion on a hill. Amen? So just get your heart right as we prepare for tithes and offering. Because tithe is a part of your obedience. Tithes and offering is a part of your obedience. And I'm sorry, Minister Margaret, you just got me preaching. I'm trying to get it down. <laughs> just so good. But it's a part of your obedience and stewardship to this house. Living Faith Christian Center is the local church here at 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey. And if you are a member here or a visitor who comes here on a regular basis, this is a part of your responsibility to be a good steward over taking care of this house. Amen? And if this is your ecclesia, which is the church, the place you call home, then you should be supported and taking care of this house. Amen. Serving and doing what God's called you to do because you want God to bless your house. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 6, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, I'm reading out of Amplifies, it says, Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously will bless Generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously with blessings. See, again, God knows your heart. God doesn't want you to put your $1,000 in the bucket and have an attitude about it. Because, see, God knows, and he knows even though you might be given 1000 and the person next to you might be given 10 cents. But that person given 10 cents has a better heart and a better chance of getting a blessing from God than your $1,000. Because you're giving it grudgingly. Are you hearing me? So it's important that when we share this with you, we want you to receive the blessing. Verse 7 says, let each one give personally as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves. He takes pleasure in, prizes above all things, and is unwilling to abandon, unwilling to abandon, unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do giver whose heart is right with God. Amen. So again, tithe is it's only an opportunity for you. It's an opportunity for you to be blessed. It's an opportunity for you to say, God, my other 90%, Lord God, I need you to bless because it's not enough. But God, I will not squander the 10% because it's that 10% that'll get me blessed so that I'll have 120 and then I can give more. Are you hearing me? 
God loves us, people. God loves us, and he wants us to be blessed. So we don't have to stand in the unemployment line or the bread line. It's okay if that's where you are right now. But that's where not God wanted you, intended you to be. I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to me. Amen? Because like Minister Margaret said and like Pastor said week before, there are so many blessings that God has already allotted to us. But we have to be obedient. Amen? Verse 8 and 9 says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances. See, her prayer preceded her, Minister Margaret said. All circumstances. So even though her blood pressure was as high as it was, her prayers preceded her. So in that circumstance, God heard her prayers. And whatever the need, the self-sufficient possessing enough, God is self-sufficient allowing you to possess enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. And as it is written, he that the benevolent person scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on forever and endure. Amen? And then 10 says, and God who provides the seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply you your, your resources for sowing and increasing the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in act of goodness, kindness, and charity. God gives seed to the sower. And I remember a long time ago, <laughs> I've been sitting in church a long time, and one of our ministers said, you don't have seed because you're not a sower. And that resonated in my spirit. And I said, God, I always want to have seed to sow, whether it's great or small. I looked at myself. I didn't look at anybody else. Amen? That's how we have to do. We have to examine ourselves when the word comes forth. And verse 11 and 12 says, Thus, you will be enriched in all things in every way so that you can be generous and your generosity as it is ministered by us willingly bring forth thanksgiving to God for the service that the ministering of this fund renders does not only fully supply what is lacking in the saints, God's people, but it also overflows in many cries of thanksgiving to God. See, it's not just about you. We got to look beyond our own households to be able to bless other households. But I understand it's hard to bless other households when your household is short. But if we're obedient, God will make sure all our needs are met. It's God's goal that both we and as a giver and those that are being blessed will obtain the blessings. So don't cut yourself off from the blessings that God has for you. Amen. Video, if you would show the ways in which we can give. Here at Living Faith, we have made giving easy by using electronic options as much as possible. You can text to give by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. You can give once or set up as a recurring gift. Just enter in your details, confirm your gift, and you're done. You can give through our LFCCNJ church app. This method will look similar to text to give The iOS version of the app can be downloaded at the App Store, or you can get the Android version on Google Play. You can also give online at lfccnj.com slash giving. If these options are not possible, you can obtain a pink envelope and deposit it as you leave. We thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So let's stand for our tithes and offering confession. Hmm, thank you, Lord. Let's read. We decree that because we are tithers, we receive the promise of the scripture that protects those who tithe and give offering. As a household, we are committed to tithe and give into the Lord's work. Therefore, we claim tithers' rights. That means no devourer, destroyer, waster, plunger, or pillager come rob from us in Jesus' name. They cannot steal our blessing or fruitful harvest. They cannot steal from our home, businesses, or from any of our loved ones. The destroyer can't strip away our heritage or harm our children. We stand in the tither's blessing, which promises that the Lord will rebuke the evil one on our behalf. We stand in the tither's blessing that the Lord will open up heaven's treasure and pour out blessings we do not have room enough to receive. We stand confident that the tithe is raising a standard against every demonic plot and attack. 
We have faith that as Jesus, our Lord and eternal high priest, stands in heaven receiving our tithe, we are under the covenant of his blessing. We prophesy that the promise to the tither rests upon our families in Jesus' name. According to Malachi 3.11, Hebrews 7.8, amen, amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, we take you by your word today, God. We honor you with our tithes and our offering, God. Lord, you are our total source, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that our supply is more than what we need so we can give to others, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are big enough to handle the smallest or the greatest problem, God. So therefore, Lord God, we come willingly, Lord God, with a willing heart, Lord God, offering our tithes and our offerings unto you, God, in this great house, Living Faith Christian Center, God. We thank you, Father, as a result, God, you will rebuke the devourer on our behalf, God. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our finances and everything pertaining to us, Lord God, that the blessings, Lord God, will not leave us, Lord God, but they will overtake us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. So seed, we speak to you and we declare to you to go and you to grow and to go into the good ground and grow and come back full and ripe so we will have enough, more than enough to sow again and again and again and begin to increase our tithe and our offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So I'm going to shift the hot topics today. Amen. Because I'm always ready when God calls me. Amen. Amen. So the month of October, which is starting next, uh, actually Tuesday, the month of October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And so we're, 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 we're excited. We are excited. We're going to be celebrating our awesome pastor throughout the month, not just on the second Sunday, but throughout the whole month. Now, we heard pastor say she's going to be ministering on the first Sunday, but throughout the rest of the month, we're going to give her a break and a rest, and us ministers are going to be ministering to you on behalf of our pastor. Amen? So we want, some, want you to get excited. We might have a musical guest or two, but you need to come to see. Amen? So we want you to get excited, prepare your hearts, ask God how you can be a blessing to your pastor if you're not serving, then begin to serve. If you're not coming on a regular basis, come on a regular basis. If you're not someone like you ought to, do what you need to do. But let God know we appreciate our pastor and all she does. Amen? Amen. So we'll see you the whole month of October, will we not? Amen. The Heirs Together Marriage Ministry invites married couples to join us for another marriage small group connection on this Friday, October 4th at 7 p.m. in our Kingdom Cafe. We will continue our candid and real discussions and testimonies and encouragement with other couples on the journey of aligning our marriage for the open door in today's culture. And if you're married and you're a Christian couple, that doesn't defunct you from having challenges. Can I get an amen? It's because we're, we're married and we're Christian that my husband and I are still married 38 years today. Amen? And so we want to encourage you as married couples to come out and be a part of what God is doing, not only in your life, but in the life of others. And if you have challenges, well, guess what? Get in line. We have them too. But together we can be strengthened. So come out on Friday, October 4th, right there in our Kingdom Cafe, and be a part of what God is doing so that we can have strong, strong marriages in the body of Christ. Amen? The devil would have us believe that the, the divorce in, in uh, the church is higher than that in the world, but not so at Living Faith Christian Center. Can I get an amen? Amen. So come out and be a part of this. We ask that you do register. There's a QR code out there for you to register, or you can go online at our website, uh, www.lsccnj.com, and register. Please register by October the 2nd. Amen. And lastly, we're having a creative workshop. This creative workshop is called Fundamentals of Theater. Do you have a desire to sharpen your creative and theatrical passion? We are inviting you to attend a two-day workshop, which will be held in our youth hall on Friday, October 11th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, October 12th from 10 to 1 p.m. The workshop uh, will be instructed by our very own uh, alumni, Pastor Kathleen Crosby of Fresh Start Worship Center. For details, call the church at 856-661-8110, extension 142. And also, you can register online on our website or by scanning the QR code in the sanctuary lobby. Amen? Amen. God bless you, and thank you for being a part of Living Faith Christian Center as we welcome our awesome pastor.
praise the Lord. Come on, let's give Minister Margaret another hand for laboring over the word. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Minister Margaret. Um, do we have any first-time attenders? Any first-time attenders? This is your very first time visiting Living Faith. Hey. Hi. Come on, a couple of people, just shake her hand, give her a hug, something. Amen. We're so honored and happy that you joined us today. Praise God. Do you by any chance know Minister Margaret? Okay, <laughs> I thought maybe you came on, on her behalf, <laughs> but we're so glad to have you. Uh, we welcome you to come back anytime, anytime. So thank you so much for coming this, this morning. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yep, let's give her another hand. Praise God. Um, I, anybody here, you've been coming to Living Faith, and you believe that Living Faith is your church home. You feel comfortable here. You Actually, it's more important that the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart, witnessed to your heart to make this your church family. Everybody needs a church family, and the local church is God's idea. Amen? Not the idea of the pastor. Anybody here, you want to make Living Faith your church home? You want to join Living Faith, make this your church family? Anybody? You just raise your hand. Anyone? Anyone? All right. Um, all right, so we're going to uh, close out the service, close out in prayer. You ready? Now, remember next Sunday, you know, you can come prepared. Those of you who can uh, walk the property, then that'll be fun. Those of you, uh, perhaps you want to stay inside and walk through the building or pray over the sanctuary, you know, just uh, take part in it so that we can tread this land this is this is all of our land amen all of our property so god is good our property is debt free god arranged that he he did it amen and i just want to say that the lord will work with you and your faith to get you debt free but it's something that you have to believe amen so uh, he doesn't care how high your debt is piled just like minister margaret preached today we just have to repent say lord i made this debt i messed up bad and then begin to not make any more debt and then trust the lord to work things out for you you know he's a miracle working god and i don't know about you but i want to know him especially in these last days as the miracle working god and not just have to read oh my bible's not here not just have to read the Bible to see a miracle. We want to see a miracle in our house. Amen? Praise God. All right, you can stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Anything else, ministers? The altar be open for prayer. Anybody need agreement in prayer? The ministers and elders will be at the altar to pray with you, touch and agree with you. There's power and agreement. Just make sure they know exactly what you believe in God for, okay? So don't be all, you know, unclear so that they can agree with you. Amen? Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this day that you have made. Father, we thank you again that your goodness is always pursuing us. So, Father, we do declare this day that your goodness is even with us today. And some of us, as we leave this place, as we get home, as we go to this place and that place, that your goodness is going to be there. And we, we thank you that we're going to see your favor in our lives. Uh, Father, we do agree with your word. You blessed us. We're anointed to be blessed. Amen. So, Father, we dec decree and declare that we are blessed. Come on, y'all. Happy fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Praise God. I love you. Mwah.